Tully? Throw it over. Good morning everyone. We've got these beautiful sunflowers here. Let's put them to some practical use. We're gonna feed the chickens a flower head of sunflowers and let them eat the seed. Yeah, throw it in there. Throw it in. They cleaned up that whole sunflower head in about five minutes. So we have hundreds of sunflower heads and as the, the flower petals fall off and as they dry out and mature more, we'll be throwing those into the chickens and watching them. It's a lot of fun. The garden is buzzing with activity, literally. The bees are all over the sweet corn tassels. They're all over the sunflowers. We have a great harvest of beans that Bree's starting to put up in the kitchen. Hey ladies. Hi. What are you working on? I am going to be freezing and canning green beans today. So me and the girls are watching a cooking show <laughs> and stringing beans. But I really think next year we should do a stringless variety. So much faster. These are volunteer half runners and they, they tend to be a fatter bean. And you can see in the beans, they're not overly mature, but they have, you can see the beans inside the bean pods. So they're less ideal for making dilly beans or pickled beans. Are you ladies helping? Moral support right now. Are you helping mom? Show me how you do. <gasps> Let me see it. <laughs> Good job. Oh. There's the compost pile. There's the freezing pile. Let me see. Don't you love that sound, that pop? The chickens benefit the garden. They helped us make this garden. And now the garden is benefiting the chickens. I've got all these bean ends and bean strings that we're gonna throw out to them and they will love it. <laughs> Not only are we putting up beans, we're also putting up blueberries that we picked just the other day at my parents' house. She's putting them on a pan to freeze them. Right now she's just picking out a few stems that way they don't stick together whenever you, if you just put them in a bag and freeze them, they'll just be a big giant clump of blueberries. But if you'll freeze them on a cookie sheet first and then stick them in the freezer bags, you will have, you'll be able to like pick and choose how many blueberries you want to get out of the bag. So we'll be enjoying these all through the winter on our oatmeal, on our breakfast cereal, and smoothies. house in smoothies. Yeah. Those are the, probably the three biggest ways we use our frozen blueberries. And we eat them, I'd say of any fruit, we eat blueberries the most. Yeah. And apples. Snap just like that. The blueberries are frozen and you can see they're totally loose so you could pour them over your breakfast cereal or oatmeal. You could just have three of them or four of them if you wanted or you could have a whole handful. Good job. I'm out in the garden. Could it be potatoes? Could it be beans? Could it be black eyed peas? How about corn? All those are great if you store them for the winter. We've talked about this before but it bears repeating. Butternut squash is delicious. 
It's really easy to grow and fairly pest resistant compared to some squashes, and it's the easiest food to store for the winter. The ground underneath these vines is just littered with beautiful huge squash. They're everywhere in here. We dedicated a whole corner of our garden to butternut squash, and if I had more space, I would grow more. Next year, when we're gardening where the chickens are up here, I'm gonna have at least twice as much butternut squash. That little patch, it's about you know 15 or 16 by mm, 25 feet, will probably produce enough butternut squash for us to eat two or three every week through the winter until next spring. We like to cut our butternut squash in half and roast it in the oven and serve it with um, cinnamon on it. But another way you can use butternut squash is actually as a substitute for pumpkin. So you can make butternut squash pies. I'm in the storage room of our house and this is where I show you what makes butternut squash so amazing. This is butternut squash from last year. So this was harvested in probably August or September of last year, 2016. And these are all solid and no rot. Oh, this one, actually I say no rot. There's a bad one. I'm going to throw this one out. But all the rest of them are totally solid and still good to eat. So you can work your butt off. Um, freezing, canning. This is a crop you can grow and you can store with basically no work. You put it in a cool back room of your house, um, stacked in cardboard boxes, and you just check it periodically in case any of them go bad. But you will love the storage results you get with just putting butternut squash in your back room. If you told me earlier this spring that we had to grow all of our food and only survive on food we grew, and I had to only grow one garden crop, it would be butternut squash. If we grew our whole garden in butternut squash, it is so productive. We would have enough to eat multiple squash every day. And between that and maybe eating a few goats, we would make it through the year. I can't really say that of any other garden crop I've ever grown. Supper tonight is fruit and quiche. <clears throat> And some people who decided not to eat fruit were given the choice of eating other fresh food. She picked beans. Grace Raw picked beans. to eat greens. Green Green beans. beans. We usually give our kids a choice about what fresh food they eat at a meal. We'll make a meal and serve it. Say if we're having salad, if they really don't want salad, we don't make them eat salad, but they have to eat something fresh. So something that they often do is go to the fridge and get carrots and eat carrots instead of salad. So they're getting something healthy, healthy, but they do have a choice about it. They don't have to eat just one thing, but it has to be something fresh and healthy. It's after dark, it's been a long day. I've been working outside. Brianna's been in here making slow progress on putting up food. The funny thing is you're doing exactly what you're doing the first time I came in this morning and filmed you. But I only have half a basket left. That's right. And there's a ton of beans down here. Mm -hmm. I think just finding the time to put food up with four children and really the hardest part is the meals. I have to stop and make food and clean it up. And that's the challenging part of putting up food. It seems like nighttime is the best time to do it, but this takes so long I've got to do it all day long. That's why we're not going to have string beans next year. Right. I have already put all the beans up. No string beans. Thanks for joining us today. Please leave a comment below this video on your favorite food preservation method or maybe your favorite stored vegetable from the garden. That was another great day in the homestead and we'll see you tomorrow.